Hello and welcome back to Catch and Good California. I'm Kevin. Today I've teamed up with Matt from Fisherman's Life. Yep. What are we doing today? We're going to try to dive for lobster. <laughs> yeah. Join us. Yeah. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by onions. Onions, an absolutely essential component to any decent Mexican seafood cocktail or pico de gallo. Onions, don't leave home without them. Not really. Today's video was a collaboration between myself and Matt's from Fisherman's Life, and uh, we went down to Southern California to do a little free diving and spear fishing. So uh, let's get to it. They say the early bird catches the worm. So we got up before sunrise and here you can see the, the sun rising over the water. I stopped here and looked off the bluff. And those waves, they're about one foot, which means it's pretty much flat as a lake. So we hopped in the water and uh, the main goal of this trip was to look for this little fella down here, California spiny lobster. Now this one is undersized, which is why I'm not taking him, but right now, He's got his back up to a cave and he's feeling around with his antenna and trying to evaluate whether or not I'm a threat, which of course I am, but not to him. <laughs> so yeah, Matt's lost his fin, but uh, I was able to find it luckily in the surf and uh, after a <laughs> real struggle of a morning, we got back out there and here I am diving down into the seagrass. This is uh, Phyllospadix seagrass and underneath that seagrass you can see yet another spiny lobster. There's definitely no shortage. Oh yeah, here's a calico bass. Um, oh, right, right, right. Before I even got the camera going, I speared a calico bass. But anyway, lots of lobster. Here's another one. All of these are undersized, so that's why I'm not going after them. But um, certainly no shortage of, uh, of lobster, which we refer to as bugs. Here's another bug. And you can see how they always keep their back to those caves. And if you go down there and you bump into their antenna, they'll just jet back into those caves. So these are um, Garibaldi. This is the California state fish. Um, it's protected, not because its numbers are threatened or anything, but because it's gold, and we live in the golden state. And underneath the Garibaldi here, you can see yet another bug. There were uh, lobsters all over the bottom here. So I saw that one, and I decided to keep putting around, see if I could see anything else. And uh, down here you see a horn shark, and this is real typical horn shark behavior. They just kind of lay in these cracks, and they're called a horn shark because they got this massive spike right above their dorsal fin there. So with no luck for a lobster, right off the bat I decided I'm going to start grabbing some other food. So here's a little uni, and uh, these are Norris top snails, um, Norisia norisi, and I've I've been wanting to try these for a long, long time. So I picked a few of these. Beautiful color. And I took four, even though we're allowed 35, and I took them from two different rocks, and I left probably 15 on those same rocks. Um, you know, just take a little bit here and there, but leave a few, and that way it stays uh, sustainable. You'll notice here I'm taking my snorkel out of my mouth before I take my breath. Uh, that's a really important tip for free diving and spear fishing, but uh, I'll talk about that in a future video. Here you can see this massive school of smelt absolutely beautiful um, but also when you see this or if you see pelicans diving in the water from the shore going after these guys um, that's usually an indication that you're gonna have big predator fish underneath them including halibut here I am just kinda putting around and showing you just how much life there is down here we got the Garibaldi there's a bunch of opali there's calicos that's a little sheep head down there just all kinds of life out here and this is a Megathura crinulata, the uh, giant keyhole limpet. Massive limpet, biggest in California, and uh, very, very tasty. So here I am showing it to Matt's, putting it on the board. 
This is me <laughs> sign language here, uh, telling you there's a, an octopus that I just saw down there. Um, I didn't get very good footage of this octopus because I put the camera away so I could try and catch it and he totally gave me the slip. I had four give me the slip this day, uh, but I did end up finally catching one toward the end that I'll show you. And here's Matt's with his very first scallop. Very first scallop ever. I was so stoked he got this. And he ended up getting uh, two more. And um, yeah, it was just so cool. So here I am uh, telling Matt's how to, how to process the scallop, how to get the knife in there, cut the adductor muscle. And uh, yeah, we're just sitting on a pinnacle in the middle of the ocean in the white water. And getting ready to have us some fresh sashimi. Yeah, the water was a little bit turbulent out there, that's for sure. But um, yeah, he did it really, he did it like a champ, you know? He just uh, severed that adductor muscle, got rid of the guts, and then here he is uh, removing the, the meat from the shell. <laughs> Fighting the swell a little bit as well. <laughs> So he was very generous and kicked down half of his very first scallop to me and I was totally stoked on that. It was a really nice gesture. And here we are doing the initial taste test. And I realize the audio is going to be pretty awful here, but um, let's see. I'm going to put in some subtitles so you can see uh, Matt's reaction here. So from there we were dropping back down to the reef, go see what we can find. There's another Garibaldi, beautiful, beautiful fish. And oh yeah, moray eel. Gotta be careful of these guys when you're jamming your hands back in these caves because you think you got a lobster and if this thing gets a hold of your hand it's not going to let go. But here's a pile of scallops, you can see the two on the right have orange lips, that one in the middle has got gray lip. Um, so they're a little, there's another orange lip. The gray lips are a little harder to see. Here's another one with the gray lip. Watch when I tap this, it just completely disappears into the reef. So I drop back down with my abalone pry bar to try and break loose one of these scallops. And um, sometimes you'll, you'll pop it loose, but it's back in a crack and you kind of got to pry it a few times just to kind of get some of the coralline algae off the, the back of the shell and that way you can kind of wiggle it out of the crack. But here it is, boom, fresh Pacific rock scallop. Oh yeah, and there was this really cool ray cruising around on the sand. I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. And here's another lobster. And yeah, I grabbed this one because I thought it might be legal, but I gauged it and it wasn't, so I had to let him go. And then this was super cool. This is a green abalone. So it differs than our red abalone up north, the Haliotis rufescens. This is the, the sort of one of the Southern California varieties. Um, they're obviously very protected, but very cool to see it down on that reef. And yeah, just spent uh, some time putting around on the reef, looking for cool stuff, seeing a lot of cool stuff. And oh, that's right, I talked about the bait fish. Well, here's a halibut totally camouflaged in this little sand channel. Boom! <laughs> I saw another one that was a legal size, but he got away. Oh yeah, this is an octopus. Um, two spot octopus, they're very typical of SoCal. This one was a little young, so I decided to let him go. But um, I think this is a true testament to Elios wetsuits. I let him go, and he just came right back over and tried to blend into my wetsuit, thinking that it was the reef. So uh, Elios, you guys make some great camouflage patterns and some great custom wetsuits. Anyway, eventually he just left and disappeared back into the reef. And these guys are chameleons. So when it hit the bottom, it completely changed colors and totally disappeared into the reef again. And here's Matt's cruising along. For those of you who don't know, Matt's nearly drowned two years ago. He didn't even know how to swim and he was trying to rock pick some abalone and you should check out his video on that subject. But look at him. I mean, you wouldn't know that this guy hasn't been diving his whole life. You know, to me, that's something that we can all take inspiration from. This, you know, there's an old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well. Matt stepped up and went out and taught himself how to how to swim. Went out and took lessons and everything, and I think that's really cool. Oh yeah, and then down here I found a fishing weight. Actually, two of them. The pyramid weight didn't have any more brass on it, but that uh, banana weight there, or I don't know what you call it, torpedo weight? Anyway, it was in good shape, so I'm going to keep that for fishing in the future. 
And this fish, I love these guys, not to eat, just to look at. This is a giant kelp fish. And through natural selection, it's developed this pattern and body morphology that makes it perfectly blend in to the reef. And you don't get to see it here, but when it's in the giant kelp, it actually moves the same way as the kelp leaves so that it can avoid predation. And here's a sheephead. I uh, finally got the drop on it. It was swimming away from me, so it wasn't the best shot I could have made, but it was the only shot I had, and I knew I could hit it, so I went for it, and, uh, and I got it. Then I got a Sargo. This one was also swimming away from me, so I, it went through the spine, but um, I missed the fillets on this one, so it was a good, a good shot. So I'm not going to show you exactly what I'm putting in here, but I'll tell you right now, it's very simple. It's just diced up tomatoes, cilantro, usually onion, but Kevin forgot it. A little bit of lime, threw some chili powder in there, some cumin powder in there, and I'm going to do a little salt and pepper, and then a couple dashes of uh, cholula or tapatio, and then I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of ketchup, which sounds crazy, but trust me, it is absolutely essential. Some good looking uni. Processing keyhole limpets is no joke. It's not easy, um, it's messy, and it seems like it looks like an abalone kind of. You should probably pound it. I've tried that in the past, and the more you pound it, the tougher it gets. So instead, all you gotta do is get it away from the shell, remove the gut, and slice it about 16th of an inch thin, and that's all you need. Throw that in the pan, it's nice and tender. Little bit of a chewiness, kind of like calamari. First thing I'm gonna do, that's its head. I wanna dispatch it so I'm not cleaning it while it's still alive. So I've severed its head now. I'm gonna go through and clean this part away from the shell. A nice little ring there, that's edible. You can see why they call it the keyhole limpet. It looks like an old lock and key kind of setup. Now I'm gonna take the knife, I'm gonna go up under the shell and I'm gonna sever it from the meat. There's your guts. That was its head that we cut off before. Let's set this aside, these are really cool shells. I like keeping those. Now I just gotta go through here. I've got two pieces that kind of separate out. <clears throat> that piece is totally clean, ready to cut. This piece, you can just run your finger through, get rid of that last little bit. There you have it, the meat one keyhole with it. So I just sped this clip up a little bit, but if you want to see the ins and outs of how to clean a scallop, <laughs> that weird little crab that we ended up eating later on, um, check out Fisherman's Life. Check out his version. The reveal. Boom. It turned green. Let's get cracking. What I like to do with most turbine snails, this is my first time ever going to the Norris, but what I do is I look for the operculum where it closes up and protects its body, I flip it over and I give it a wrap right on the other side and that tends to crack all the way through. Those are tough. There we go. But you can see these big fragments coming off. Move it on out. I'm going to get rid of the gut here and then I'm going to get rid of the trap door, the operculum. That's the little trap door that kind of uh, closes up and allows it to protect itself. Get rid of that because it's going to be terrible texture. Get rid of all these uh, fragments of shell as well. Definitely don't want to chew on those. That's it. It's your piece of meat there. See how it turns out. Would you do me a huge favor and scrape that into that pan? Here comes the limpet. Be real careful because it's juicy and it will splatter. Nice and 
seared in there. I'm gonna take the keyhole limpet and throw it in right now. Dude, I love this stuff. I hope you like it too. Throw a few of these scallops in there. Perfectly cooked, man. Let's see, one, two, three, four, we'll put those on the sandwich. I'm gonna mix this up. Mexican seafood cocktail. Boom. And I do love some uni, but I don't think I'm going to put all of this uni on there. That's kind of a lot. I'm going to put a couple of small pieces. I haven't had the best experience with it. <laughs> Alright, we're about to assemble. We got our scallops. We got our Mexican seafood cocktail topped with uni. It's got the keyhole limpet in there. It's got the uh, scallops in there as well. And then. Man, look at the way that fish is cooked. Perfect. Over here, ready to rock. Setting up our tortas. I just realized I think I almost forgot the best part. These weird little crabs. And these weird little snails. I'm gonna throw some of those in there. Let's see how those are. I'm hoping the Norris snail is tasty. It looks a lot like a, like a tegula up north, but a little bit bigger. And then, no joke, there's a weird little crab for you. <laughs> Put two of those on there. And it's flaking perfectly. And the little sheep head, right? Yep. It's all coming together. Boom! That is a sandwich right there. Wait a minute, I didn't put the scallop on the sandwich. We gotta put that on there now. Alright, here we go. We got this crazy, super extra seafood cocktail. A little crab on top, some limpid, uni, what else is in there? Got the Norris top snail. Scallop. Scallop, yeah. Then we got uh, all kinds of good spices and whatnot. I'll leave a whole uh, recipe in the description. And we got these sandwiches. I'm really excited for this sandwich. We'll see about that cocktail. It's gonna get crazy. Let's do the cocktail real quick first. All right. Actually, you know what, let's do the crab by itself. Of Here we go. I'm gonna eat the legs first, just because I don't want to get the full thing. I just want to see how it tastes. So sure. whatever you want to do. I'm going all in. I'm all right. dipping a little bit of this sauce here. Go Weird for it. Pea crab. I'll do it too. Damn it. The crunch, initially, is good. Mm -hmm. Agree. And then it's a little gutty. <laughs> it's a little gutty. So let's do this. Let's do it. A little limpid. I'll get a little limpid and a snail on this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Firm snail. Mm -hmm. That tomato flavor is really strong. It's hard to taste anything yeah. until later. Yeah. I don't think you're picking up on the flavor of the snail in there. It's got a good texture though. Except for that piece of sand I just got. Yeah, me too. I just got one at the exact same time. That's not bad though. That's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. I could eat this. I could eat, yeah. I could eat a good amount of this stuff. All right, taking a little bit of uni. I only do a little bit of uni each year. It's so darn rich. Mm. Try that too. Oops. Oh. Uni is uni. Surprisingly, the uni almost overpowers the tomato. That's what I was thinking. At first you don't catch it, you just no. get the texture, and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, yeah. uni in your face. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of uni. Yeah, I understand. I mean, it's good, but yeah. I, if I had the choice between uni and the limpet, I'd probably go for the limpet. Every time, every yeah. time. How about scallops? Oh yeah, where are they? There's a big one right there. Got your name all over it. Oh, there it is. Lightly seared, a little clam on the bottom. 
Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. So good. Mm. So good. Mm. Mm. If I was gonna do this again, and the idea was try a bunch of stuff that's from SoCal, see how it is. I think I'd make that all scallops, man. Just chop it up into quarters? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. It's like you're really biting into something. Yeah, that's, that's it great. It retains that sweetness, too, even after we seared it. It does. Nice. Yeah, I like that a lot. Sandwich time. Sandwich time. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Thank you for taking me out here, showing me the spot. It's been a while. I've been trying to make a video for a while, but it's yeah. finally come. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming, man. It was super fun. It was. Hopefully the first of many. Yep, hopefully. Cheers. It's gonna take me a minute to fully appreciate this sandwich. But this is the first meal that we've eaten all day. All day. Did you have breakfast? No. Yeah, me either. Sun's setting now too. <laughs> I need some hot sauce. That's good. Hot sauce? Yeah. I forgot the onion. It needs that crunch. Huh. Mm. At least I didn't forget my wetsuit. Really tough day this morning. I'm sure you know about it by now. I'm starting to feel so much better right now. <laughs> so, <clears throat> two years ago, I shattered my kneecap into five pieces. I'm sitting on the couch and I've watched everything that could possibly be interesting on Netflix. So I go onto YouTube, and YouTube's like, you might be interested in this video by Fisherman's Life. And I was like, I don't know, who's this guy? So I watched your first video, or maybe it was one of the first. The next thing I know, I'm standing on the beach with him, eating fish sandwiches. Two years later. It's awesome, man. Yeah. You inspired all of us to do this, you know that, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a big influence. I'm glad people are getting out and enjoying outdoors and really getting in touch with what uh, what's readily available to them, you know? Like we're close to a big city. We're not gonna say exactly where, but it's right in your backyard. I'm all about those scallops, dude. I think that was the best part. I agree. I feel like I'm wearing more of the sandwich than I'm actually eating. <laughs> Now I just gotta cut back to uh, reality right now and just, uh, just say this one thing. We've been making recipes on this channel since we started for, what, two years ago. And uh, pretty much every time there's this moment, you'll see where one of us goes, <sighs> like complete contentment with a perfectly balanced recipe. That does not happen this time. So, <laughs> turns out I can't make pico de gallo without onion. So that sandwich, it was good, it was food, scallops were on point, the fish was perfectly cooked, Matt's did a great job with all of that, but that onion, it really was really, really important to the overall recipe. So if you wanna see how to do the Mexican seafood cocktail the way I normally do it, go check out one of these early videos that Martin and I did when we first started the channel. It was mussels, steamer clams, and scallops, Mexican seafood cocktails. Anyway, let's get back to the beach. Thanks for watching. Um, please comment, subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And uh, super fun hanging out with Matt from Fisherman's Life. Check out his channel. I'll put a link up here. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. Oh man, jammed my hand into a hole to try and grab a lobster. There was a freaking 4 a eel in there. I can feel it. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Kevin dropped the scallop in the sand. Not cool. All right, we're gonna go rinse this thing off.